week from tonight, we are going to know who will lead Denver for the next four years. Now bear in mind, Denver hasn't voted an incumbent mayor out of office since 1983. You had to think that Jamie Gillis had the momentum going into the runoff with Mayor Michael Hancock, but since then she has struggled to explain away her own words and she's reversed a key position on the urban camping ban. Gillis is trying to regain her footing with her first television ad. Politics guy Marshall Zellinger puts it to the truth test. We are uniting Denver. Jamie Gillis is out with her first political ad, highlighting the support she has from former mayoral challengers Penfield Tate and Lisa Calderon. As mayor, I'll take action to rein in out-of-control growth and housing costs. This is vague, and a mayor can't do either of those alone. The 13-member city council could impact growth because it has the power over zoning, the height, number of stories, size of buildings, the density, location, and use. As for housing costs, a mayor can't just enforce a policy that suddenly makes your $1,800 a month one-bedroom cheaper, but the mayor, with the help of council, can address affordable housing through programs that help low-income families get assistance with their rent. Gillis's ad continues with more of what she says she'll do as mayor. Pass ethics reforms to stop sexual harassment at City Hall. From a policy standpoint, this is yes and no. Pass ethics reforms? No, city councils do the passing. However, as mayor, Gillis would have the power of the executive order. Gillis could issue an order creating policies and procedures for how to handle employees accused of sexual harassment, kind of like an addition to your employee handbook. Now, while the city can address how to handle sexual harassment complaints as employers, sexual harassment itself is already a crime. And to finally start solving our homelessness crisis. This gets a shrug. It's a claim that comes without specifics. Even Mayor John Hickenlooper had a 10-year plan to end homelessness, and we're still seeking solutions. Big developers had their mayor. I'll be a mayor for Denver's future. This just needs context, because a closer look at both candidates' campaign accounts shows contributions from developers. The mayor just happens to have more. This has come up a lot. So on that note, I'd love to give you a full accounting of how much each candidate has from developers, but I can't give you an exact number and I want to be honest why. When someone contributes to a campaign, they basically self-report their profession and their employer. So it's not uniform. I may do it differently than someone else. I don't contribute to campaigns, by the way. People may do it differently. And so it's it's a messy database. I can't mm -hmm. just click on developer and say, hey, this per Hancock has this much and Gillis has this much. We're working through it so we can give an exact number shortly. Fair to say, based on all numbers that we have, they're both supported by developers, just different developers and in different amounts. Hancock's got a whole lot more developer money than she does. Correct. And part of that, Hancock has been raising money for four years since he was reelected. Sure. So that also adds to that difference. Makes sense. Marshall, thank you.